However, it's time to assess the structural integrity of the phone as a whole, as I always do with the bin test. If you ever hear noises during this portion of the video, it's usually a bad thing. And none of those were good noises. The volcanic black frosted back has been thoroughly cracked. The cracks consolidate into what looks like a line directly underneath the stovetop camera bump. I don't think it's the frosted glass that's what's making the phone weaker though, since we've had plenty of frosted textured glass phones survive. And they survive in one piece instead of millions. I think it's something else. The phone is still alive though, which is good. Let's bend the OnePlus 10 Pro from the other direction. And now, except for the flashlight, the OnePlus 10 Pro is definitely not alive anymore. The S Pen itself seems to have about the same construction as it usually does. The tip doesn't seem to want to come out though, so maybe those aren't replaceable this year. It is watertight though, so it'll be fun to see how they accomplish that from the inside. So far, it's lasted longer than the 10 Pro, at least until we flip it over. Same spot, right at the camera lens, which is rather unfortunate. I was rooting for this one, and we might as well keep going. Once again, the 10T fractures along the same line as the 10 Pro, right along the top of the battery. Notice though, the screen pulling its own weight with an almost 90 degree bend, and still in one piece. Wait, I guess going a full 90 is a bad idea. Or maybe the screen is actually still fine, and it's just the battery ribbons that have come disconnected. And I don't know about you, but when I think of Gamer, I think of some pretty aggressive hand movements, because emotions are usually high. Which means that a gaming phone should be even more durable than a regular phone. And keep in mind during this bin test that I'm not even using all of my fingers right now. Unfortunately, with the very first bend, we see some pretty major cracking along the antenna line near the bottom half of the phone. And that small crack, for some reason, has catastrophically affected the internal vibrator. Which now sounds more like a hissing cat than anything else. With another bend from the front, we lose the entire screen. At that same weak point, that antenna line. The Victus glass in the front is still intact, it's just the display under the glass that has given up the ghost. One billion colors are gone in an instant. This of course is not an ideal situation. A phone without a screen is like a car without tires. Finally, we'll flip the phone around to the back and try one more time. And right there next to the center USB-C and accessory port, we find another weak point in the frame. And just like Apple's iPad, it's game over for the ROG Phone 5. May he rest in peace, sis. Now, when I first picked up this phone, I noticed that it's extremely heavy, to the point where I'm not even remotely concerned about it breaking. But, you know, there are some weird shapes and structural designs going on, and, well... Turns out there is a weaker gaming phone than the ROG Phone 5. The Legion Phone Dual 2, with its two speakers, two fans, and two batteries, is now most definitely in two pieces. The display is shattered and destroyed underneath that Gorilla Glass 5 which surprisingly is still intact. At first close-up glance at the breaking point, it looks like pitted porous metal was the culprit of the break, but it turns out it's a clean snap right along that antenna line, which match up on either side of the glass hump. The antenna lines are usually plastic to allow the phone to get its signal since antennas don't work well through metal. Unfortunately though, these same antenna lines are also symmetrically mirrored at the other end of the camera mountain, which means the Legion Phone 2 is now the Legion Phone 3, as in it's in three pieces. Sliding a Carbon 1 into your back pocket and sitting down, with the screen curving along with your curves, would leave the phone mostly fine. No cracks or permanent damage, just some pretty major flex. It's the bending from the other direction that we'll need to watch out for. Carbon fiber is not so strong around its third axes, perpendicular to those fibers. This phone is officially totaled, and does not survive my durability test. I think it's time. Let's say you leave your phone on the couch, face down, and Great Aunt Susie comes over to ask why you didn't bring a special someone with you to the family reunion. She sits down, and... Now your screen is unresponsive, and has a cool new four-point design in the center, 
not from the rock that got caught earlier, but from some physical component inside of the hinge that's under the display poking through the back of the screen. Each of the four corners of whatever that rectangle object is under there just got smushed into the soft backside of the screen. After turning the screen off and then back on again, the phone does return to functionality, but the four pixels do not recover. The phone is still functional, even after the screen is punctured from the back. The hinge is, you know, bent backwards and it's a little more floppy than usual. Something's broken inside, aren't we all? But it's still rather incredible the phone is still able to function like normal. That deserves a thumbs up. Moto is putting up a fight. It looks like one of the things that broke is whatever was holding down the screen inside of the chin. You can see the display pulling out a bit, revealing some pretty cool Faraday cage looking components like we saw inside of the Nokia 3310. The teardown should be interesting. Touching down at the bottom edge of the display, however, immediately kills the entire row of pixels running up the screen. I'll test my theory again by touching over here on the right side. Yep, definitely a bad idea. The paper thin OLED display technology still kind of blows my mind. Since the bottom of the screen has been pulled out of the phone, it's not really going to fold back flat anymore. The little bubble near the hinge shows how thin and flexible the display can really get. Of course, it'll always need the foam body to support it, so it won't crease or bend in the wrong spot and get wrecked. But as we can see, it does take quite a bit of abuse. Flexible displays still need a gentle curve when they fold. If the fold gets too tight and the screen actually gets creased, the whole thing dies completely. And it's over. Solve many structural issues. And the OnePlus Nord does have some structural issues. Nothing major happens with the first bend from the back. Even though the phone was left a little kinked, it's only when bending from the front that we hear the first snap. I try not to get spooked when my phone cracks, but I am only human. It turns out it was the frame near the volume button. And once that last shred of structure was gone, the rest of the screen was soon to follow. The interesting thing to note here though is that the entire phone is still mostly fine. The exterior glass is not cracked at all on both the front and back surfaces. It's just the interior display underneath the glass that's broken. Can it withstand a backpack or maybe someone accidentally sitting on it? Even our swooping eagle probably can't protect the iPad from its own little microphone hole. It really is in the worst spot. The design flaw is still a design flaw, who would have thought? But for kicks and giggles, if you were ever to put it in your back pocket, things might get a bit dangerous. For both the phone and your bum. As we can see, the phone screen is indeed made of glass, with cracks running along the entire surface. And now, only the bottom strip of the screen below that crack is still working. The Lifephone 2 does not survive the bin test. It is interesting that the portion above the crack is still frozen in its last state before breaking.